I was the first openly gay black man out there on reality television at that time. There was none. And so, and even now, I'm the first openly gay black man to ever have a daytime talk show. Listen. Welcome everybody. My name is Kyle Price, but you can call me KP because we're friends now. So um, today we have one of Daytime's leading hosts right now, Mr. Karamo Brown. How are you feeling today? Um, KP, I feel great. I'm glad to be here talking to you. You are extremely handsome. Thank you. You know, I try. Oh, wow. You, you su you're succeeding. My <laughs> gosh. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. All right, but uh, congratulations to you on season three of Karamo coming up Thank September, you. September 15th, correct? Yeah, September 16th, 16th. Uh, Monday, September 16th. Um, thank you. I mean, like, it, it, to have a daytime talk show and to be able to go into season three, especially in a landscape where most shows don't make it past season one or two, I'm just feeling really blessed. I'm excited. The audience is resonating with the show. Um, the fact that, like, I'm one of the, the last shows, there's only, like, me and Steve Wilkos that does real people. Every other show that's out there does celebrity. And the fact that we're here, I mean, Tamara does as well, but she does her news stories, you know, where we're helping real people. The fact that my show is able to take people and really see what they're going through and give them real tools to be better, um, I'm just really proud because it's like our audience just gets it and it's like, I'm loving it. Right. And by season three, you usually get your feet off the ground. It's like, all right, season one. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> season, season, season one was a little bit rocky. I was like, oh, hold on. What are we doing here? <laughs> season two, I was like, oh, I, I, oh, I know I'm at. I got this. And season three, oh, we're, we're about to hit hit the ground running. Okay. I was about to say, yeah. how do you feel about, like, you know, the new season, how people are receiving everything that you've been doing? It's, I, it's I, been I, great because, I mean, it's more of the same. So it's more of, like, these families that are in crisis, me really helping them through, these couples that are in crisis. But as well, like, um, you know, there's a lot of fun in it. There's a lot of, like, things that people are just coming to enjoy. You know, I keep I keep myself looking good. I keep my guests elevated looking good. Um, we're adding in moments of like Q and K where the audience are getting to ask me questions and get advice from me, which is really exciting because like so many people say like, I don't have the courage to be on your stage, but I do need your advice. And so the fact that they can be in my audience now and get that advice, you know, um, that was something that Wendy Williams was a big hero of mine. And I always loved how she talked to our audience. Mm -hmm. And so establishing this is an homage to, um, Wendy in a sense, because I just loved how she would, you know, give her advice. Um, how you doing, Wendy? We miss you. Oh, uh, right, we miss her. <laughs> um, we miss her so much. But um, yeah, and then, you know, like also a lot more of this season, like me being transparent when using my story to help people, you know, like I have my son's mother coming on and we're going to be doing um, a series about co-parenting because, you know, my journey as a gay man is becoming a father is very unique. But one thing that's not unique about my story is that me and my son's mother don't see eye to eye on most things, but yet we have to still co-parent to make sure that our sons don't, because I have one biological, one adoptive son, that they are able to see the respect and love so that we're breaking generational trauma. And so this is something that, especially for me, was so important. So it's just a lot more of all of these things that are just going to keep helping people to be better. I love it that you're fully fleshing out like how you reach out to people, but then also bringing in the interpersonal connection. I was going to ask exactly. you exactly. You mentioned Steve Wilkos, and your show is under NBC Universal, uh, which is Jerry Springer, Maury, Jerry's Court, Steve Wilkos, and your show Kelly Clarkson as well. Kelly Clarkson, we love okay. shout out to Kelly Clarkson. Um, yeah. I'm like those are all very well established shows, but also very specific daytime television shows. Like, how have you been inspired by those shows? And I was going to ask you, how do you feel like you kind of differentiate from the legacy that those shows left behind as well? Well, I think I think what I love about those shows is I love that people come on there and get to be their real, authentic self. Where I see myself as a little bit different is because as a black man, as a gay man, um, those are the the audiences that most likely apply to be on these shows and are actually are here sharing their stories. And so those, all those men you just named were all white. And yep. so I have a different and straight. And so though I respect them and love them, I have a different perspective because when my guests sit in front of me, um, I see my mother and I see my sister and I see my aunt and I see my uncle and I see my cousin, and I see my best friend. And so when they're telling me the things they're going through, Yes, I love their vulnerability and I love their the fact that they can be real about their emotions, but I also understand 
the trauma that has happened in our community, both being a black man and being part of the LGBT community. And I understand that that is more than 45 second, 45 minutes of like, let's talk about this, that there has to be real tools given. And so one of the things that I really appreciate that the audience resonates with me is that you're getting real advice. I'm truly listening. You know, my granny used to say, you got two ears, one mouth, you're supposed to be doing one of those things double time, which is listening. So I listen to my guests and I hear what they're going through and I give them real valuable advice. Also, like since season one, I've been giving out therapy. Like you ain't never seen one of these shows give out therapy. And for me, it's because I want to make sure that if you're on my show and you have the courage to be open about what you're going through, yes, I have the skills and knowledge to give you some advice for this moment, but the work must continue. And I want to make sure that you have that resource. And so that's how I feel like I'm different. Yes, it's still entertaining, but I also see my guests and see their trajectory and their journey a little bit different than other hosts. And that's why I make sure, and that's why I think what people are responding to. Yeah, and then also we've, we've seen you literally your whole TV journey from real world Philadelphia to Queer Eye to- I was a baby like you, I was 20, like, well, how old are you, 21, 22? I'm 37. <laughs> oh, that's good. It's good. It's, okay, that's good. It's good. Okay, good. good. No, because yeah. I grew up watching you on Real World Philadelphia. And I'm like, yeah. oh, okay, cool. Like seeing the representation, but seeing you being so open and honest and eventually yeah. making your way to Queer Eye and then getting your own show. Like this level of transparency that we've seen you not only on this show, but multiple shows and like, you know, just opening up that space. I, I'm sure that feels very. I mean, yeah, like I don't have a space where anybody can like, People have seen me from 23, so, mm -hmm. and I'm now 43. It's been, this is my 20th year of being in this industry. Mm -hmm. And as a gay black man, first of all, it's, it's you know, like, I first of all, I appreciate what you're saying. I'm saying, like, you watched and saw, because, like, being, I was the first openly gay black man out there on reality television at that time. There was none. And so, and even now, I'm the first openly gay black man to ever have a daytime talk show. And mm -hmm. so... I look at what I'm doing as a, such a gift because people have gotten to see me transparently through my journey, up, good, bad, down. People like me, then don't like me, then have liked me again. And I'm just like, regardless of what that is, I know that God has put me in the position to continue to make sure that I share my story honestly and that I try to make sure that people who don't have representation have a little bit like, I don't represent everybody, but I'm going to try to give some representation, but also try to give some support to say, like, yo, if you want to know how to get it done, I'm trying to try and right now with you and come on with me. Let's do it together. And so that's what I'm most proud of. Right. I, I love that. And then also as a black gay, black gay black man in this landscape nowadays, now that there are more representations, like you have the culture, yes. the little Nas X's. The yes. You know, to yourself. Do you feel like more of that pressure to feel like, all right, well, I need to like represent myself in the best light or now that there's more of a spectrum of gay black men in, in TV and media that it's less of a burden on me to get this right. Less of a goddamn burden. Let me, let me tell you something. <laughs> there was some conversation in the beginning where I used to have to defend like me feeling like, okay, I'm like, I don't even want to go through it. But like, because it was like, I remember we used to do these panels where we would tour, tour around the world and it was the same six of us on these goddamn panels. It was the mm -hmm. same six and we get the same questions and then we get the same things. And I was like, I was like, I don't have any power. I don't, I don't get to cast somebody on TV. I don't get to put anybody like I'm, I was lucky enough to get some opportunity, but I am not a representation of all that. I'm so thankful that there is more, but there's not enough. And that's something that I keep saying, like there is not enough. There needs to be more a lot more because we were talking like we're talking about artist wise yes. um you we could talk about three you know gay black men or you know maybe one black trans woman that's giving having some success in music where i can name six seven eight ten white artists that are gay lesbian trans you know mm -hmm. that are winning you know um grammys and stuff we're talking mm -hmm. about like in television representation, like the number of white LGBTQ people in reality television versus the number of black mm -hmm. is, is dramatically disproportionate. So though I am excited for who has come and what they are doing and root them on, like, like I feel like I'm the elder now, I'm 43. So I'm like, I'm the elder now, you know what I mean? Like the only elder that I'm looking up at is Rue, who's 60. And I'm like, okay, or 60s, um, that I'm like, okay, that I'm like, but there still needs to be more. And that's what the conversation has to be. Like, there has to be more. And there, the imbalance has to stop.
the imbalance has to stop because there are there are some trans men out there that I know are some of the dopest artists ever. And why they don't have a platform, I don't know. But I will always push them out there on my stories and try. I wish I had a show that could get those stories on there. But, you know, like the only celebrity guest I've ever had on my show was Big Frida. Oh, wow. Uh, and, and everybody loves Big Frida. So, yeah. But the yeah. reason we did that is because I wanted to show people the support and love. Right. You know, he didn't. they didn't come on my show to talk about drama that was going on in their lives. They came on my show so we can celebrate them. Right. And that was an, a pivotal moment for me. And so, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. there needs to be more. But I am excited that what we have and I root them on. Okay. If you had a dream guest in the Black LGBT specter, who would it be? Well, we already have Frida out of the way. So who else would you like to see on there? Um, oh, who would I like to see on there? If we're gonna talk about like what their what you know like their personal lives and stuff and kind mm -hmm. of like what they've been through, um, like yeah, because you know this is a show that we talk get deep and about like what you've been through and what you the choices you made. Mm -hmm. I'd probably want to see my friend Jesse. I would love to see Jesse on my show. He mm -hmm. and I have been friends for years, and I think a platform that he could be safe and talk about it and share his story. I would love to be that platform for him. Mm -hmm. You know. I, t I was um, recently watching, uh, listening to Jesse speak at ABFF and like just seeing where his new going. film is everything with him yeah, and Vivica, that, everything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's really good. And I think I think your platform would be a good platform to like muddle through all the mess and then also have a great conversation, black gay man to black gay man, and then just get perspective on the whole situation where he was at now, of what then and where he's at now. So well, that's that's exactly what you what you just said is what I do. We muddle through the mess and then we get to, we get to like the real of where you were and where you're at. And that's like the truth for my entire series. And I think what you just described is what why I think I'm growing mm -hmm. and like why my numbers are like rocking and like why I like we're, we're successful. And I'm so thankful is because that's exactly what's happening. And so, yeah. It's a compliment that you're also on social media heavy. Now, I've seen you in a couple of viral clips. So. Yeah, I go, we go viral a lot. 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 What was your favorite viral clip that you did so far? I, I don't, I'll, I'll tell you the one. Well, I have a lot. Well, I love when I dance and it goes viral. Like, I, anytime I do Ice Spice, or like, yeah, we just did Nasty Girl and it did like 10 million or something, you know. But I think the one that I, the one that I was surprised that went viral is that, and we're talking about gay men. Mm -hmm. I had a gay black man on my show whose father was very homophobic. And I was I was like getting the father off the show because he was wasn't responding and I was never gonna trigger my guest. And as I was getting the father off the show, my guest was like, cut the show, cut the show. Uh mm -hmm. and that has went viral. I don't know if you've seen that clip at all. I haven't seen that cut one yet. I see all the show. I'll it's tell you when you when you see cut the show, I'm gonna tell you this real quick. Let me, hold, let me show you this real quick. You okay. see this boy. <laughs> And I just couldn't believe that people took this man trauma and turned it into a viral meme where everybody is over here talking about cut the show. The this internet one right here. Place. The <laughs> internet, the <laughs> internet has no chill at all. What's going on? Not Michael. <laughs> take me off. You have you seen that? Take me off. Oh, cut the show. Please so, make sure I see it. Send that to me so I can see it. <laughs> I will. <laughs> so it, it has been used. I mean, there's a couple of videos that, because they put memes over it, where each of those memes have like 10 million, mm -hmm. 15 million. And it's just this boy was on this show saying, cut this show. I can't be on here no more. And y'all <laughs> took that boy's show pain and turned it into something crazy, which is, is wild to me. Well, at least he, hopefully he's getting something out of it now. And, oh, know. yeah. He loves it. Now he's happy oh, about it. You <laughs> know what I mean? Yeah. Because in the moment, we helped him resolve it. We got rid of his father. We made sure he was safe. And so now he was happy, you know. Okay. So everybody's gonna get a moment, not only just on the show, but on the internet when it comes on to the internet as well. They're gonna get a moment. They're gonna get a moment. We love it. So what can we look forward to seeing? Uh, you gave us a preview of everything that's coming up with season three. What can we look forward to seeing with the uh, upcoming season? Well, sorry, one second. Look, look at you. <laughs> I put that starburst in because I just got too comfortable with you. I apologize. Um, <laughs> you made me feel at home. That's what just happened there. My job you just is armed me exactly. <laughs> you just armed me, and I felt comfortable, like I'm talking to a friend. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no. Um, mm -hmm. if this is season three is just a lot more of the same. Okay. But again, like I said, we're doing more Q and Ks. I'm doing the segment with my my son's mother. I mean, like we we have we get hundreds of calls a day from people saying they want to be on my show, which is mind blowing to me. 
that people watch and they feel so connected and feel so safe for what I do on my show that they want to be on the show. And so we're just going to keep elevating, elevating, and elevating because I plan on being here for the next 15 years, 20 years. So well, period. I ain't going nowhere. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> listen, <laughs> y'all done, y'all done messed up now. Like, okay. I'm, I'm stuck like, now. Like, okay. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> but before oh, we go, I need to know, because this is quintessential gentlemen, the style inspo, like, where do you get your yes. style inspiration from? Like, what, what is your go-to uh, look? And then also, do you have a signature piece that you always put on that makes you feel like the most confident? Well, for me, I yeah, I wear a, a L.A. baseball cap 24-7, and it makes me feel confident, makes me feel sexy. You know, I grew up in an era where, like, a fitted cap was was quintessential to me feeling my sexiness. And so, you know, like, I put a hat down in the club, walk through, and I feel like the biggest trade in the world. And so that has stuck with me even in, you know, like, just <laughs> daily life. I like to put a hat on. Uh, um, and I think a sleek hat, even with a suit, even with... Um, you know, some jeans with a slack can always look good. And I always am able to style my hats pretty well. Um, but as well, like for my talk show, like I love um, I love a suit where I can use accoutrements such as like brooches and flowers to like really elevate it. I think that men's styles should be played with a little bit more when it comes to accessories. I think I love I love being very neutral and like even in what I have on, it's very neutral, green and white. So it's not a lot of busy patterns. But having just enough of style right here says, okay, we've added a little detail earlier. I had something on that said KB. Um, and I think like, I think a great fitted suit with a little accoutrement is dope, you know, or a fitted hat. Those are the things that make me feel sexy. Oh, oh and I love that? a white chuck. Oh, a clean white chuck. Classic. Or, or some forces. Like those also go with like everything. Yeah, everything. Yeah. Okay. But um, thank you so much, Karama, for joining me today. 